Hello, hello. Thank you, all of our attendees, as we let this room populate here. I'll just keep on monologuing a little bit. Welcome, everybody, to the November edition, which is actually here in October of the Stare in Town Hall. So I just got back from a whirlwind trip to this little tiny show called Zoomtopia. And it was, I was just commenting before the show starts, I still feel a little tired because it was a whirlwind of fun, um, talking to end customers, talking to our partners, talking to new partners, talking to our vendor partners, talking to our friends at Zoom. Um, just filled with tons of great conversation, a lot of excitement, a lot of new features coming to the Zoom Room capabilities and Zoom platform as a whole. And I wanted to thank, uh, we've got Esther Yoon, who is the Product Marketing Manager for Conference Room Solutions, joining us today, coming off the heels of Zoomtopia as well, which is kind of a big deal in the Zoom world, uh, shuts down San Jose pretty good. Uh, what we really wanted to do was uh, just have a little chat about coming off the heels of that show on what is in the future for the next uh, coming up on Zoom, what uh, were some of the big announcements, and then most importantly, from all of you in attendance, what are your questions that we have from Zoom? So I've worked with Esther for a long time, as has Melissa here, as we're always joined. And um, I got to say, she is a bit of a rock star when it comes to being able to get things done, being able to answer questions. And then not to put you on the spot, but uh, I've always been generally pleased with our conversations on, you know, whenever we need something or we need a real answer about what, uh, what the future of Zoom entails or how to do something or... <laughs> Really just what the right solution is. You're always there for us and you're always there for the partners that work with you. So I appreciate that. Um, typical format, down at the bottom of your screens there, you see the Q&A pane. Go ahead and click that. You can start asking your questions now, anything that comes to mind. Uh, the Q&A panel will be moderated by Melissa Dillman. And Esther, I'll let you take it away for a few minutes. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit, uh, if you want to give a synopsis, some of the most exciting things from the show. Uh, get people's minds thinking on what the future of Zoom entails, what they might have missed if they weren't there, which I think a lot of people might not have been. Yeah. And uh, we'll then uh, take it straight to the questions. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, thank you guys first and foremost for having me here. Um, my name is Esther Yoon. I'm the product marketer for our conference room solutions. And so um, at a high level, that is Zoom Rooms, our flagship conference room offering. That's a conference room connector, uh, connector which is our interop solution. But it also includes the value add services such as digital signage and scheduling display, which hopefully is very beneficial to you guys as well. Um, I, I want to start off by saying, you know, from a from Zoom's perspective, our success is really going to be tied to our customer success. And if Starin is successful making, you know, their customers happy, then in the end, it all trickles back up to Zoom's success as well. So um, that's why I'm here and that's why we work so closely together because our success is inherently uh, tied together, right? Um, and so with that, you know, it's been a pleasure to work with you know, the Dillman folks, the <laughs> Dillman family, uh, and also Bobby and the rest of the team. Um, we've done a lot of really cool programs, uh, such as strategic seating programs. You guys have built uh, a lot of really bespoke capabilities for us um, on your guys' platform so that we can actually deliver happiness uh, to our customers. And that's why so many people at Zoom here love working with the Starin, the Starin family, because you guys take things you know, you guys take a very modern approach, right? You guys do things differently. And that is very in, in line with how Zoom likes to do things. We don't like to do things the way things have always been done just for the sake of doing it, right? We like to start from scratch and say, hey, what's the best way to do it? And we've found so much success working closely with, um, you know, our Starin family in doing so. All the way from PSO to seating programs. Uh, so yeah, I know that was a long winded spiel, but thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so, you very much. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that I'm really, really excited, actually, do you mind if I have, I have some slides, maybe it'll help. They're visual, not much text. Absolutely. Bring them on. Awesome. Okay. So I'm not um, a words kind of person, but I do, I'm a very visual individual. And so, you know, I wanted to share with you guys kind of what we announced at Zoomtopia regarding Zoom Rooms. Um, one thing that was really, really exciting for me, because I've heard this be a pain point for many of our customers, was um, one, the pain point stemmed from, hey, I have a panel 
for room control systems. And then I have a Zoom Rooms controller panel and they both have different UI. Um, one, they reserve the, the room control panel for typically their boardrooms because it just means like an extra cost. Uh, now we have Zoom Rooms native, uh, native room control integration. And that's the ability to take any IP-based command and integrate it into your Zoom Rooms controller. So typically what you would see for the enterprise would be things like light control, um, your projector, your AC, uh, your blinds. Um, but the cool thing about this is because it can, you know, really control anything that takes an IP command. Uh, when I demoed this at our sales training, uh, I actually had an LED wireless uh, belt on Odette that we uh, controlled from the Zoom Rooms controller. I had like a, a little tubey, you know, with the car washes, you, ha you have those like little dancing tubies <laughs> controlled that. So, so really showing the versatility and yeah, you can support traditional room control use cases, but you can also control uh, non-traditional use cases. It's kind of up to the um, customer. Uh, and we don't have much documentation on this, but you know, um, I know Sam Kakaiko, who's on our PSO team, is working on documentation. Uh, this capability is going to be rolled out by the end of this year. Uh, so I'm, I apologize if you guys are asking questions on how do we do this. We'll be able to answer that really, really shortly. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. You guys will get documentation uh, as soon as it's available. Now, uh, this one is... Let's see if it plays. So we have a find a room map integration capability. So essentially, um, the use case for this is, you know, you walk up to your display and it's, let's, let's pause here. It's busy. And you're like, okay, you look around and all the rooms around you are busy. Well, with find a room map integration, you can actually click this button in this top right corner that says reserve other rooms. We're actually working on making it more discoverable because right now it's a little subtle. Um, you can click that and see a list of all the rooms nearby that are available or on your floor that are available. And then you can reserve it straight from there. Now, if you don't want to upload a map, you can actually see a list view of all the available rooms and they're going to be in alphabetical order. So that capability is, it was, it's GA. So if you guys have scheduling display, I would recommend testing it out. Um, you upload the map as a JPEG or PNG directly through the Zoom admin portal. It's super easy. I guarantee you training is gonna take less than three minutes. Um, and basically you reserve the room, you can name the meeting, add participants, so it's added to their calendar. And here's, a, I'm just gonna breeze through it. And then it, reser it reserves the room and then you're golden. So that's that. This is kind of what it looks like on the back end. Uh, it's slightly changed now, so I apologize for having this outdated image, but it's really as simple as you upload the JPEG or PNG uh, file, and you can just draw where the rooms are and then assign your Zoom rooms that are already you know, in your admin portal to these uh, different spaces. And you can do this at the floor level. The other thing that we announced is Companion Whiteboard. Now, this should be really exciting for you guys because this is essentially another way for you guys to bring hardware into an existing Zoom, rooms, uh, Zoom Room environment. So without, having, without the customer having to purchase an additional software license, if they wanted to bring a touch display and a compute as a dedicated interactive whiteboard, so let's say they have an existing room that was just standard displays, but they're like, hey, we want to replace our whiteboard with an interactive display. They can actually leverage their existing uh, room license. Just bring in a touch display um, with a computer. It actually doesn't need per peripherals, but if you have like, let's say a D7, you can use that as well. Um, then you can automatically sync it to that room. And so great opportunity for you guys to just kind of bring more hardware into an existing Zoom room space. So yeah, there's it right there. And then this one, this, is, this was uh, something I was very passionate about because one of the biggest differentiators about Zoom rooms is the ability to scale to different use cases. I know you, I'm talking to the group of experts here, but you guys know about the multi-cam functionality. You guys know how we can scale up to like training rooms very easily. Um, well, We've now added this capability where if you bring a green screen, you're able to have a virtual background for your Zoom room. 
So this is actually one of the setups that we had at Zoomtopia, like front and center, and we actually conducted live webinars and streamed it straight to Facebook Live. Um, and here's the setup, and I have the equipment list I could send over if you guys want, and you guys will probably make your own actually with our PSO team. Um, but this was just a really cool demonstration of, you know, Zoom rooms is great for huddle rooms, conference rooms, and basically any physical, any other type of physical environment or use case where you want to leverage, uh, you know, a, a physical environment, right, and, and connect it to video. So here's kind of what it looked like on the back end, and everything is controlled by the uh, Zoom rooms controller. And this was like our mock-up. So our mock-up and our actual deployment turned out to be uh, quite similar. <laughs> Um, and then, okay, so the other, the last thing I, that I want to bring uh, to you guys is, you know, we announced a big uh, new program. Uh, it's, it's really, it stemmed from what customers were looking for, right? Uh, you guys know, like flexibility and, and options are huge when it comes to customers. They want hardware recommendations, reference designs, but they also want to be like, hey, I work only with this vendor. I want to bring them in. Totally get that. Number two, they want simplified procurement. Now, you guys have done a really great job making procurement simple. Um, you know, on a global le uh, level, that becomes a challenge, right? When you have uh, customers that are like, hey, I have, an, I have my HQ in the US, but I need to ship to 60 different countries and I wanna minimize the number of vendors involved. And then lastly, uh, management. Um, one of the uh, largest, um, frustrations that we have with customers that are deploying videos at scale is, you know, let's say they have 100 rooms and 90 of those are like uh, small huddle rooms or conference rooms. They want to be able to manage those quickly um, and do the end to end software stack even down to the device firmware. Now, um, you know, currently, we had some friction points in these different uh, types of milestones. So deciding hardware, uh, uh, procuring hardware installation management user experience, now, um, what we're trying to do was make that entire customer journey more streamlined and frictionless, um, specifically for the huddle rooms, uh, the global, uh, large scale global huddle room and conference room deployments. Uh, so with that said, um, you know, I'm, I want to preface it with Zoom rooms will always maintain that open hardware ecosystem for our customers. That is kind of a core part of our DNA and it allows for, you know, powerful customization, uh, you know, support for bespoke use cases. You know, you can really optimize your AV, especially for those large spaces. Um, and, and so that is, that's not going away. This is an, an addition to our hardware options. We wanted to say, hey, we have all of this. Oh, but then there's more now. Uh, so we've announced a purpose-built appliance program uh, with um, select hardware vendors, which I'll go over. And this is really for uh, scaling to smaller and mid-sized conference rooms. So think about more standardized room deployments. Um, the three big things is it has to be easy to procure globally, it has to be easy to scale globally, and it has to be easy to uh, manage at scale. So think just larger deployments, this is really where um, the value of appliances come, uh, come in. So like I mentioned, you get everything that you love with Zoom Rooms. You get the DIY aspect for those who are uh, cost conscious. You have the customization aspect for those who are extra creative and want more of a out of this world um, Zoom Room setup. You have the off the shelf um, uh, use case where you can pick and choose the vendors of your choice, right? We have the single vendor kits for people who are like, I don't want to think, I just want like a Windows IoT setup. You know, Logitech has a lot of these great solutions. You could still have multi-cam and, and still leverage all the capabilities of Zoom Rooms. Um, and then we have remote software updates for our Zoom Rooms uh, application. But now with our Zoom Rooms uh, appliances, you can have remote firmware updates for all the peripherals on the appliances. You can have a lockdown OS designed to only run Zoom Rooms. Um, and then you can have that global streamlined hardware uh, procurement option, which this is kind of like an asterisk because this is somewhat available. It's just kind of, um, it seems to be a little bit more difficult to find for some customers. So the three uh, partners that we announced with are uh, Poly, D10, and Neat. And actually, let me see if I have a better image. Oh, sorry, okay. So this is the D10, uh, D755 inch all-in-one. Um, you guys are very familiar with the Windows IoT version. They are rolling out with a appliance version that's completely locked down. Now, I, I've talked to a lot of customers about this. 
they want the options for both. They're like, awesome, Windows IoT is great because it lets me still add my, uh, uh, my additional uh, peripherals that I want. Like if they want a multi-cam setup, they can have that. Um, if someone is just like, I want it to be completely locked down, I don't want anything, I, I want it at face value, like the D7 appliance is, is a great solution. Um, we have a company, a partner that announced their company. Um, they are called Neat, and they announced the Neat Bar and the Neat Board, which is a touch display. And then Poly announced their Appliance X series. So there's an X30, which is for smaller rooms, and then there's an X50 for larger rooms. And those specs can actually uh, be found on their website if you guys want to know what's the difference in terms of X30 and X50. Am I okay on time, Bobby? Yeah, you're fine. You're, yeah. you're doing great, Esther. Okay, great. Um, so think about, uh, you know, in layman's terms, what is a Zoom Rooms appliance? It's enterprise-grade video conferencing without enterprise size complications. These are for people who don't want to do any thinking. They don't want to add multiple cameras. They, they're just like, give me a box, and I just wanted to plug it in real quick, and I want to do 100 of these at scale and have it work. That's, that's really what it comes down to. Um, these are appliances, meaning they were built from the ground up all the way down to the OS. So they're, te they're technically run on Android operating systems and they're totally custom to the Zoom Rooms experience. Um, and the way uh, to pur uh, purchase these uh, solutions are gonna be different. Um, well, Neat specifically, Neat will only be selling through their website. So they're gonna take more of an e-commerce only approach. Um, Poly will be available through their select channel network. And, and just for everybody on the call, um, the Poly and the D7 products, those are all available through the channel through Starin here in the US. Yep, yep, and, and that's really great because if you think about it, between these two partners, um, you have your mid-size, or sorry, small conference rooms with the X30, mid-sized conference rooms with the X50. And if you want to Zoom rooms for touch, you have the D10. So it hits about 90% of use cases from what I've seen. Um, installation is extremely easy for the customer, right? You guys have awesome uh, getting started guides and your getting started guides are going to get even more compelling because you're going to be able to show like, hey, for the controller, you just get the POE, connect it, awesome. Then you have your, your bar, your X30 or X50, connected to display, connected to power, connected to ethernet for data. It's kind of like a consumer experience, just like you would set up a display with a sound system at home. Um, and the, they had a video, like Polly had a video where they were showing the installation. It literally took two minutes. Um, and then enhanced management, I already covered this, but you know, through the Zoom admin portal, you click update and it does the entire software stack. Uh, even down to the device uh, firmware. So in a nutshell, um, the way we're starting to structure our, our Zoom rooms is, is really, you know, first and foremost, it comes down to what does the customer want? If they want that flexibility in their huddle spaces and conference rooms, we're gonna recommend them a Windows IoT computer or a Mac or something like that so they can have that bespoke experience. If they want that, hey, I don't wanna think, I want that turnkey solution, we're gonna recommend a Zoom Rooms appliance. For large rooms and bespoke use cases, we say, eat your heart out. You can have multi-cam, you can have you know, the peripherals, peripherals of, your, of your choice. Here's just the basic components that you need to have a Zoom Room. And you know, they can work with AV integrators. I know you guys have a really strong AV integrator network to build these bespoke um, room use cases. Uh, and so in a nutshell, our announcements aren't taking away from anything. We're not saying, hey, we're end of life being this. We're uh, doing a next generation version of that. It's not at all. It's all additive. It's everything that you had before plus more. Love and, it. Yeah. And so here's kind of a look at the products, X30, X50. The neat bar is going to be, so uh, Poly is going to be available for pre-order end of November. Uh, neat bar is going to be, is available for pre-order now, so the one on the left, this is going to be available for pre-order on neat.no in January. And then D10, uh, this is available for pre-order now. And I forgot to mention that they actually announced a 27-inch appliance uh, specifically for the executive office and focus room use cases. And this is actually really cool because it's priced at $599, which is just mind-blowing. Yeah, it's yeah, I, I couldn't believe it when they told me that they could price it at that, um, that low. Um, 
so yeah, basically in a nutshell, that was the uh, Zoomtopia Zoom Rooms announcements in a nutshell. Okay, Esther, I mean, that was great. I mean, you had an awesome, you covered a lot, um, but you know what you left out? What? The phone. Ah, okay. <laughs> and I just watched your video on LinkedIn and how cool you were with the phone. That's hilarious. And right. I have to say, yeah. we just, so Zoomtopia last year, we saw the phone, right? We saw Zoom phone. Mm -hmm. This year we implemented it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, obviously I'm pretty, I'm pretty deep with Zoom. I, I use it every day. <laughs> um, I was a little concerned. Like, how do I... I have a call and how do I get it to a meeting? And yeah. I have to say, it's amazingly intuitive, just like everything else with Zoom, right? Yeah. Let it's so the, easy. Yeah. I could send out the link in this group if that helps. And that way we don't have to watch it now, but if you guys want to watch it on your guys' uh, free time, we just uploaded it to YouTube. But um, in a nutshell, what, what Zoom is trying to do is drive a video first experience, right? But we know that uh, phone systems aren't going away anytime soon. Um, people, or maybe they are, but people still use them all the time. And um, there are scenarios, especially in the modern workforce, where you're like, hey, we're talking about a project. Oh, I want to share this with you, but I can't because I'm on a phone call. Let me describe you the content on my <laughs> screen. It's super weird. Uh, and so what we are looking at is, okay, so collaboration and communication should be seamless, even when the needs for collaboration and communication change in real time. So I'm sending out this, um, let me see, all- We'll send it out, Esther, it's okay. We have a follow-up. Oh, okay. So we I will include it, no problem. Um, but I mean, it really is amazing how fast it works, Yeah. how convenient it has become to be on a phone call and be like, I, yesterday I did it, and the guy I was talking to, he's like, well, how do we get into the meeting? And I'm like, we're already there. I mean, it was so seamless. Yeah. He didn't even realize we had already moved. Yep. So um, huge fan, love the Zoom phone. That's working for me, loved your video. Uh, um, you. you and your videos are amazing, so I enjoyed that. Um, people are writing us questions, so keep those coming in and um, we, will, we will get to as many as we can. Um, one of the other things that came out of Zootopia that I wanted to talk about briefly was um, the new PowerPoint virtual background. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was an ooh and ah moment. Yeah, it really takes you beyond the traditional video conferencing use case where it feels like a face-to-face -face just conversation to an interactive, literally like Vanna White approach to communication, right? So it's almost like you turn on the TV and it feels like it should be a one-way stream, but you can now communicate back to someone who's sharing content, literally interacting physically with the content that's behind them. It's, yeah, I was absolutely impressed by our product management team. And, you know, the other thing that, um, I don't know if it, it traveled across the networks as much, but the fact that you all brought an orchestra into the keynote. John Williams. Yeah, a Zoom meeting. Yeah. That was incredible. Yep, that, and R Richard Branson, he was supposed to be calling in from Necker Island, which would have been, I would have loved that to show like, you know, bandwidth, like even compromised bandwidth and we can have a crystal clear call. Um, but yeah, you know, we, we truly wanted to show the power of video at Zoomtopia. Yeah, it, it was very impressive. Um, okay, so those were my two rock star kind of moments, but let me get to what, um, what all of our guests want to know. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I see a couple of questions. I could. Well, yeah, what all is new with Zoom and what we can offer to our customers? Well, I think we've covered a lot of that. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of new stuff obviously coming out. Um, one of the other things, I know this isn't on the question yet, but it should be, um, that was touched on briefly, I think is really important, was the carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. And talking about that reduction within the carbon footprint because we can do everything via video. Yep. You don't have to travel the miles. I hate to fly. Um, so anytime I can do it v via video, I'm all for it. But um, that was really interesting as well. Um, for Zoom rooms and native control integration, how much of the GUI can we customize? That's a great question. 
Yeah, that is. Um, so you can actually customize quite a bit. So for example, uh, let me see if I can find, you could do kind of those carrot notches. So you can do incremental, like if you do an AC, you could set temperatures. So you could do up, down, you can make a binary on or off and you can actually customize the text being shown. You could have different modes. So for example, um, at Zootopia, we had uh, turn on the lights, but it wasn't on or off. It was do you want shooting star effect? Do you want meteor shower? Do you want the black the hole? lasers? <laughs> do you want lasers? So you can have different modalities of a different uh, of a control system uh, that are preset. Um, and yeah, we're looking at expanding all those capabilities. But those are the three main ones, which is the binary, um, direct uh, kind of uh, notch up and notch down. So bring it up, bring it down, and then also the modes. And I'm guessing for the folks that we we speak with the most. Um, right now, we can't put branding on it, like a, you know, if, if it's a corporate background image, but I imagine that will probably come soon. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't knock it out for sure, because it's something that people have asked for that, you know, branding is a huge part of large enterprises, and uh, that's something our team's definitely exploring. Awesome. Um, next question we have is, is scheduling a display, a scheduling display available via Android? Yes, it is. It's available in Android for portrait and uh, kind of wide standard view. Awesome. Um, and our, someone's asking about the Zootopia videos. It's a big hot topic within the industry of streaming the events and talking about um, having that access because not everybody can fly out San Jose and, and get out there. Can you tell everybody where they can find those videos? Yeah, if you go on zoomtopia.us, uh, in about a week and a half, we'll have all those uploaded um, on there as recording. So all the breakout sessions, uh, as well as all the uh, product keynotes and main stage sessions. And I know I watched, even though I was at Zoomtopia last year, there was so much going on, you couldn't get to every one. Oh, yeah. So I watched a bunch of them when I came home, um, as you know, to get a chance to watch it again or enjoy it again. So that's yeah. awesome. Um, Zoom Rooms native control integration, how much can the GUI be customized? Okay, we talked about that. You are going to be using IP control, so that will be being built out more and more, correct? Everything is IP based. Yep. It, it, as long um, as it can take an IP command. Yep. Or IP addressable device. Yep. So that'll be great. Um, one of the other things that came out was the simultaneous interpretation. Ah, yep. So, okay, it left us all scratching our heads. How does that work? Do you, do you have a bunch of interpreters that are living inside my Zoom or what? <laughs> no, actually, uh, so what it, so a lot of times large organizations will have translators for things like town halls. Um, and so what we're doing is offering this capability where you can have interpreter channels. And what happens is, let's say, Bobby, you are talking to everybody and you have hopefully one day, teams in Japan, Australia, China, like, you know, everywhere globally. Um, and maybe uh, English isn't their first language. You can have a, uh, you know, someone who's bilingual in those local regions jump on as an interpreter and they can listen to you and translate what you're saying into a interpreter channel. And let's say if I was like, hey, I wanna hear the Italian translation of what Bobby's saying, I could find it if there's an interpreter assigned and what happens is Bobby's voice would go down to 20% and I would hear my interpreter voice at 80%. And the reason why we do that is because tone is such a big part of communication. We want to understand when if Bobby's yelling or super happy and super excited, like you want to be able to hear those nuances. And so we'll actually be able to support unlimited interpreters. Um, if you, if you had like, let's say a hundred, we can actually support that. Can you imagine Bobby being yelling? I can't actually. Never when I said that, I was like, that's a silly thought. <laughs> One day, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> that was funny. Um, the other thing that came out was talking about the transcription. Yep. And that it can capture action items. That was really interesting. Can you tell everybody about that? Yeah, so we are partnering with Otter AI and we're partnering with them because they have, um, you know, a really high level of accuracy when it comes to translations. They do a really good job at picking up things like accents and little uh, and tonal nuances um, a lot better than we've seen a couple of other vendors. And um, basically, when you open up the door for live transcription, there's a lot of things that you can uh, 
there's a lot of things that it opens up in terms of artificial intelligence. So um, live transcription is great if, let's say, you just want to passively view, you can view just what's being said. Um, but from there, think about what happens when you have this pool of text. You can start extracting keywords like, okay, Melissa, I'll take that as an action item. We'll, we can find those trigger words highlight them and kind of give you a cliff notes version of let's say you had a two hour meeting you don't want to have to watch a two hour meeting recording right you want to be present in those in those let's say brainstorming sessions and then you want your meeting tools to be able to intelligently <laughs> sift out all the stuff that actually is important to you right so that's really what we're trying to do is make collaboration and and you know working easier we don't want you to have to be taking notes you know you, we want you to be physically present with your remote and in-person uh, participants and and the other people were there at zoomtopia and they were amazing um but now i know that in all my meetings i will be using the term bobby action item frequently <laughs> just so that it picks it up and <laughs> just thought bobby <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, okay, so I'm running over a little bit here. Um, and Esther, I know you're extremely busy. I was so grateful that, that you were able to join us, but let's hit one last question. This is a great question. When you're dealing with the mobile car version of the Zoom room, what happens when we unplug and plug in, move it around, et cetera? Yeah. My experience has been you don't have to reload everything. It holds everything for you. I can also send you a video of what that experience looks like because I have a demonstration. It's a 47 second video of me pushing around a D7 cart and I'm already signed in or this room, let's say like, uh, I think it was signed in as like a D7 cart product team or whatever because the product team, they like to just drag this wherever they are. Um, and so essentially once that room is assigned to a Zoom room, you can just plug it in and you can actually use it over Wi-Fi. We don't recommend Wi-Fi, but you can technically. Uh, and once you plug it in and boot it up, in about 47 seconds, you are in a Zoom room. It just takes a couple seconds to load up. To yeah, and it's not reloading keys. It's not, it, it all just comes right back. We do um, this in our office here quite a bit. We have one same thing dedicated to mobile cart because when all of our rooms get busy, suddenly somebody's dragging the cart around. And we do use it on Wi-Fi because I know Melissa and I have personally wheeled it into our warehouse. <laughs> to have some impromptu meetings when things are getting a little busy in the office. And it's a great use case. It works flawlessly. Yep. Yeah, it really does. Um, we also have uh, uh, one, of our, one of our friends has put together a challenge for sales executives, and that is to video record and broadcast. They're putting together a Zoom rooms, D7 with a cart. And proving that even a vice president of sales can do it in under 20 minutes. So <laughs> it is all very simple and very quick and efficient. And, uh, yeah. you know, it all just works, which is the key to Zoom, right? And I think you guys continue um, surprising us with new features and functions. And that versatility of it just works has been maintained. So it was really great to see. It was great for you to join us, Esther. Bobby, you probably have somebody that's going to get a surprise. A surprise, yes. And thank <laughs> you, everyone, for jumping in. This was really good to get to know, um, to get to know a little bit more on the backside of Zoom for those who weren't able to attend the show. So thank you for coming out. Uh, we do have a winner of our $50 gift card today. It is LaShawn Jackson. Thank you very much. Mark Decker will be reaching nice. out to you to go ahead and provide that. Uh, everyone attendees, I know we had a few other questions come in here. What we'll be doing is we'll, we'll respond to each of you personally. Um, and everybody, some of the details and links that were shared, videos and other collateral, we will get that out to you in the follow-up email that comes, as well as the recording of this so you can share it with coworkers, refer back to anything. Um, a lot of great information here. As always, Esther, thank you very much for taking the time out to join us all and run through these details. Um, it's always a pleasure. Awesome. My pleasure. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you.